Hi, I am Praveen Kumar Pandey. As we know that to work properly in any domain, we need a strong foundation. Many students want to do good coding using different type of programming languages. But due to the lack of basic knowledge of programming, they are unable to understand the concepts. That is why they are unable to do the proper coding. The purpose of this tutorial is to provide the strong basic knowledge of Java concepts so that a student would be able to enhance the Java programming skills. Here, first lecture, we will understand about the programming language and its features along with the concept of compiler and interpreter. That is very important. Then we will move ahead to lecture number two and we will understand the history of Java and its features. In tutorial number three, you will get to know about the OOPS concepts in Java. Further, in tutorial 4, we would see the components of Java, tools and software required for development of Java program and the live demo of writing the first program in Java and its execution. Lecture number 5 is designed to give the basic understanding of static and non-static variables, command line arguments and constructors in Java along with the live demo. In lecture number 6, type costing, user inputs in Java, parsing and array concepts have been discussed with the examples and demo. In the last lecture, the core concept of Java like how to achieve the abstraction, polymorphism and inheritance have been discussed in details using live coding skills. After completion of this course, you will be able to get the proper understanding of basic Java concepts with the hands-on on the concepts of Java. So let's start. Hello guys, in this lecture we will discuss about the programming language. But before going for the programming language, we should discuss and we should understand what is the language first. Okay. So, I am giving a real-time example regarding to the language that if I want to convey some message to my friend, both want to communicate with each other, so we need a mediator to communicate, okay? That mediator is called as language. Suppose I know only Hindi and my friend only know English, then the communication is, is difficult because we both know the common medium to communicate. Okay, if I can convey any message in the Hindi and he doesn't know the Hindi, then he cannot understand the things. In the same way, if he wants to convey anything to me and I don't know the English, then he, I would not be able to understand what he is talking about. Okay, so the major part of communication is that the medium of communication should be same. Okay, so if we both know Hindi, we can easily communicate and if we both know uh, English then specific, uh, specifically we can uh, communicate with each other okay but when we want to communicate with any type of device any type of computer system any type of something so there will be the constraints because as we know that the computer system is an electronic device then accepts raw facts and figure process it and give us the useful information as an output Okay, so computer system is a non-living thing and it basically operates with the electronic signals. Okay, so whatever, uh, whatever instructions we want to give to our computer system, then what happened computer system should understand that particular instructions and on behalf of those instructions it will work. Okay, but we know that computer system only know the electronic signals and we cannot uh, give the electronic signals uh, uh, communication links for that. So we need a communication medium so that I can convey my instruction to the computer system and computer system easily understand those things and process accordingly. So going for the next uh, uh, lecture, okay. What is programming language? So programming language is nothing just a mode of communication or the instruction, the instruction what I am giving to the computer 
to operate on behalf of my requirement okay the set of commands set of instructions and other syntax uh, syntaxes used to create a software program also can be a programming language okay so nowadays different number of programming languages are there to give the commands and instruction to the computer system on behalf of those instructions the computer system will work okay so for an example java php c c++ uh, many number of languages were there on behalf of those our computer system will work okay so programming languages is those languages which can easily convey the human uh, instruction to the computer system that is an electronic device okay now we'll move to the machine language what is machine language so if i understand hindi so this is human languages okay so i can easily understand the instructions the machine language is those languages by which that any computer system or electronic device can understand the command given by any type of user okay so it's nothing just a format of language by which any computer system can understand understand what is what what type of instruction is given to that particular computer system to operate with okay so it can be uh, in the form format of uh, you can say in the electronic signals because the computer system is an electronic device so it can un easily understand the electronic signals so the signals are passed uh, uh, in a way that is called as dig, uh, binary digits okay so binary digits we can uh, call it as 0 and 1 0 means uh, the false value and 1 means the true value okay uh, 0 in, uh, 0 and 1 is nothing just the mode of communication with the computer system if i want to give any instruction to the computer system and we can able to process those instruction in the proper way through the circuit board of that particular computer system that will become one if it will not happen like this that will become zero okay so those zero and one are the false and uh, true values according to our instructions and that is called as binary digits so computer system can only understand the binary digits to process the instructions okay so those binary digits we can call as 0 and 1 and every instruction what we are giving to the computer system should be in the format of binary digit okay but there is a constant we know only english like languages okay to communicate with the computer system and computer system only communicate with the 0 1 format okay that is binary digit format okay so for that to make it easy we have to improve that machine language we have to introduce a new language that is called as assembly language okay what is assembly language so for an example if i want to give any command that should be in the format of 0 and 1 so the commands will be like 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 0 0 like that okay that has a specific meaning suppose i want to uh, press the enter button for that enter button there is a there is a command in the binary format that is 1010 so it is easily understand 1 2 3 4 10 commands i can easily understand and learn it but when the commands are in the number of 10 100 thousands then it is very difficult for a human being to learn those commands or to memorize that command okay for that we have introduced a new language that is called as assembly language so whatever is the series of that particular uh, programming language that is called as binary digits okay for that we have given a specific name to that particular binary digits okay wherever required we use that particular name and computer easily understand that what the instruction is giving to uh, we are giving to that particular computer system okay so it is the intermediary between the high level language and low level language high level language like java php c sharp in which we can easily uh, write the codes in the english like languages so, so uh, assembly level, level language is the uh, mediator between the high level language and the low level language low level language includes the uh, machine level language and high level languages include the english like languages uh, like that uh, java c sharp php all those things okay so for particular name we can process those binary digits in a proper way okay for that it consists of symbolic equivalent for a particular computer machine language okay and it is used to convert the code that programmers write 
the whatever code that programmers write that is called as source code and when it is converted to the machine language with the help of some mediator that will call the machine language in the form of binary digits okay so next we will go further further and we need a mediator to convert that assembly language to the machine language that mediator is called as assembler okay and assembler can be used to translate the assembly code into the machine code so that machine can easily understand what instructions are given to it okay next we will we will move ahead to the compiler and interpreter these are the two most uh, common concept over there by which we can explain the how the functionalities are going inside that particular computer language okay so compiler is nothing just uh, takes the whole program in one shot compiles is against the number of errors number of uh, wrong codes number of semicolons whatever code you have written whatever programming language you have written over there to give the instruction to the computer system it will compile it and checks for the errors the, uh, the missing things and all these things and display all the things at one shot and you have to remove all those things all those errors and so that that particular program will compile and it will be able to give the instruction to the particular computer system okay so compilation of that particular program in one side is the major uh, uh, functionality of a compiler okay so after compiling it it will generate an intermediate code that is called as object code okay and this its compilation is done before the execution so there is two things compilation and execution so compilation is the thing that we are checking the errors the wrong things into that program and making that program in such a way that that program should be compiled and uh, successfully after the com compilation that program will execute and give the output according to your need next one is the interpreter so i have told you in the compiler that uh, compiler have understanding of all the codes in one sort and display the corresponding errors it displays the corresponding exceptions and we have to uh, uh, solve it in one sort but interpreter is just different doing the same thing okay so interpreter will go line by line and check that that particular code line is correct or not if that particular line is correct then it will move ahead to the next line if that is correct it will move ahead to the next line in that way it will go to beyond uh, till the end and after that it will come it will execute it and give the result okay if it finds any difficulty in particular line it will move back to the previous line until or unless you will not be able to remove the errors of that particular line okay so compiler compiler will do all the compilation in one shot and interpreter do line by line compilation okay now we will see the architecture easily compiler and interpreter first of all we write the source code then compiler will compile that particular source code against the errors okay against the logical mistakes okay and after that it will after removing the particular uh, uh, errors and logical mistake in one sort okay it will convert that source code into the machine code and after machine code when it will get executed it will give us the output but we will see the source code of that particular compiler the source code of that particular compiler the source code is directly interpreted line by line and it will directly give the output okay after the execution okay so this is the basic idea behind that compiler interpreter I mean most cases we usually uh, use the compiler for that okay so this is the basic understanding about the languages and how compiler and interpreter will work i think you will be able to understand the concept thank you hello guys in this lecture we will discuss about the java programming language history as well as the feature of this programming language before starting the history part we will discuss something before it okay so in 1972 c was introduced okay and it has the strong concept that is called as functions on the use of function in the c programming language the c programming language was called as procedure oriented language and it ruled the world for many years okay but time to time we feel that a strong security feature feature was not implemented at that time so we have introduced the researchers has introduced 
a strong security features that is called as oops oops means object oriented programming systems okay and we feel that if 100% that oops concept was implemented by any type of programming language that programming language will become 100% secure okay so c has opted that concept and became c++ okay in the starting of 80s era okay so after using of c++ we felt that it is not able to implement all the concept of oops 100% okay so researchers started to develop a new programming language that will become 100% secure and that uh, uh, will give you the security to the user to the application and to the devices to run in a secure way okay so a team of researchers including the james gosling mike sardin patrick norton and its team they have started to work with the security features and they have developed a new programming language they have developed a new programming language that was starting named as green talk okay and the project was started in 1991 with the help of these three researchers along with the team okay and the motive of that particular team to develop a programming language that can implement the oops, oops concept 100% and became the object oriented programming okay that is implementing the 100% OOS concept okay so green talk was developed in uh, earlier to 90s okay and the extension was dot gt the extension was dot gt over there and after that later it was renamed as oak and in 1991 it was introduced as java programming it was introduced as java programming okay so the project of the java started with the green project okay under the license of sun microsystem okay at that time sun microsystem was a big company under that these researchers were working okay and nowadays this is the subsidiary of oracle corporation the well known software company okay so initial in 1995 Java has developed the JDK. JDK means Java Development Kit. Okay. And that kit is that particular software is responsible to run the Java program onto any particular operating system. Okay. So the first version was the Java JDK Alpha and Beta in 1995 of Java. Okay. Nowadays we are running the current version Java SE 10 that was introduced in 12th of March 2018. Okay, so this is the basic history where some researchers have started the project and implemented the OOPS concept over there. They have introduced the no, no, um, new programming language. Okay, and that programming language was renamed as Java in 1995. Okay, and alpha and beta version of that particular programming language was introduced in the market. Okay, so that programming language was so brilliant, so helpful. So so secure that it was captured whole the market in very few time okay so in this we have used the oops concept and made it secure everything inside the programming language was accessed only by the objects okay the one feature of object programming language the remaining feature of object programming language we will discuss definitely in the next lecture in details okay so this is the history of the java programming language now what are the important features except the object orientation they have developed under this project okay we will discuss ahead okay so we will go to the next slide and here is the important feature okay some of the important feature we have listed over here first one was object oriented second one was portable platform independent secure robust and dynamic okay what it means for first we will discuss about the object oriented feature of java programming language okay so if we talk about the object oriented features of java programming language that means everything can be accessed by the single entity that is called as object okay everything inside the java is accessed by 
the single entity called as object and the classes and libraries of that pro particular programming language was written in such a way that you can consider it as an object or class okay next point is that it organizes the software as a combination of different type of objects that incorporates both data and behavior so whatever data it can contain on that data which type of behavior that particular software will perform everything is wrapped in the context of object and if we access that particular objects it means we are accessing the data and behavior of that particular application by which it can perform the functionality okay so based on this methodology the software development and maintenance are also including the oops concept to run in a proper way okay so if we call about the oops concept there are majorly six concept over there first one is called as object second one is called as class third one encapsulation next polymorphism abstraction and inheritance so all the six, six concept if any programming language will follow we can say that that particular programming language is 100% object oriented programming language and java follows it all okay so we will discuss that concept and in its implementation inside the java later in more depth how it is following which type of functionalities it, it is performing on behalf of oops programming language and which functionality it is leaving okay so everything that is called as object inside the inside the java and on behalf of that particular object we are accessing all the things okay so this is the very important feature of that particular programming language object orientation second we can call the portability of java programming language okay so if you are using a single machine to write a program after writing the program you can carry that program to any platform okay whether it is mac operating system whether it is windows operating system whether it is unix linux any type of operating system we can port it and run easily with the help of some software we will discuss it later okay no implementation dependencies feature included in that if we are designing into a, a operating system that is called as windows so if we design a program into the windows it doesn't mean we cannot run it into the mac operating system okay so everything related to the storage is predefined over here okay and java code can be designed in such a way that you can run that particular program in any platform okay without any problem okay so portability is the important concept of java programming language next one is that platform independence this is the very important feature and you should understand what is platform independent Pro generally for an example uh, we say that uh, this person is independent means he can stood independently and do its own work okay and it doesn't require any dependency on it okay in the same way over here if we write any java program okay that if if we consider the previous language like c so whatever we are writing in the c it was the source code and source code is directly converted to the machine code no intermediate language okay so platform independence means suppose we know the computer system computer system has the processors okay there are number of processor 8080 processor 8085 processor 8086 processor these are the series of processor which which architecture is different okay suppose we have made a program on 8080 architecture of a computer okay and i want to run that particular program into 8085 of architecture then it is not possible to run with the c or c++ programming language okay but that java is independent of this okay we are designing any program in any architecture you can run that particular program to the some other architecture okay with the help of jbm java virtual machine if jbm is present over there we will discuss the jbm concept in the next slide don't worry so if, if jbm is present on that particular device or platform you can easily run that particular code into the particular system okay so like the c programming language when we write a source program it is directly converted to the 
uh, uh, machine level languages here in java it is not uh, uh, possible if we write a program and compile it it will not directly convert to the machine level language it will convert into a intermediate language that is called as byte code and that byte code is independent from the system architecture and with the help of jvm if jvm is present in any machine whether its architecture is 808 whether its architecture is 8085 whether its architecture is 8086 irrespective of the architecture it can easily run over there so that is why it is called as write one run anywhere okay that is the called as platform independence feature of java so you can see you can see in the this architecture first dot java dot java is the extension of java program and first is our file name okay so if we have written any program in first dot java file this is the java program and with that java c java c means java compiler it, it is a compilation for program present in our uh, dependency environment with that particular java c compiler we can compile the first dot java program into first dot class so after compilation it will convert into a dot class file okay and that dot class file is also called a byte code that is intermediate code Inter after intermediate code with the help of particular jvm it can interpret the particular first dot class program that is byte code program and convert the byte code into native understandable from os okay so over according to the os we can convert it into the machine language and we can get the result easily okay so code is compiled with the compiler and converted into the byte code that is called as intermediate code okay and that byte code is basically platform independent code because it can be run on multiple platform okay so you can develop any one environment okay environment means any type of operating system and run on another environment without doing any modification in the code okay that is the important feature that java has and with that use it is very strong programming language okay now we will move to the next feature of platform independent and it including uh, including its architecture so previously we have discussed the windows program we have made the first dot java with the help of that particular java c uh, uh, compiler we can convert it into the intermediate program that is called as byte code and that particular byte code with the help of that particular jvm with the help of that particular jvm we can run that particular byte code in windows platform in mac platform in linux platform in unix platform if jvm is present over there okay i hope you can understand this okay next is security so if any type of programming language is designed the basic thing is security we can apply the security over here okay so with the use of pointer in the previous programming language the languages was not secure here there is the lack of pointer okay no explicit pointer is assigned to the java that is why it is secure okay and program run in a virtual machine irrespective of the physical machines okay so for that if we design any type of program then java take that particular program and adds a class loader that separate the classes for a package of the local file system from imported one from a network okay so from network uh, security is like that if we are designing any program and we are connecting it into the internet okay so internet has the feasibility that it can download any program and that program is possible to spread all over your systems okay but here we are using the sandboxes sandboxes are the special area where any program will come to the computer system will go to that particular sandbox and sandbox will hold that particular program irrespective of spreading that particular program into the different number of packages or folders okay so it is very secure in that sandbox you can execute that particular thing and it will remains over there okay and it the java program also have the bytecode verifier okay that is the responsibility of that particular verifier to check the code fragments for any illegal illegal code that violates the access rights so without the access right you cannot do anything okay and it has also the security manager that define the access of java classes which type of access provided to whom and what is the constant of that particular class it is decided by the security manager so such type of features are enabled into the java programming language that is why java programming language is very secure next feature we are going to robust robust means strong okay so according to the strong memory management 
lack of pointer helps in improving security issues automatic garbage collection already included in that and exception handling is also included okay and the type checking mechanism and handling the runtime error is the strong feature enabled in the java programming language that is why it is called as very strong or robust language now coming to the last point dynamic okay in java programming also we have the feature of dynamic memory allocation okay we can allocate the dynamic memory to any data according to the requirement of that particular programming language okay that programming language applications or requirement of user okay so dynamically we can provide the memory whenever it is required for it we use the new operator to assign the dynamic time of memory okay it can also link the new java class libraries java objects and java methods dynamically so that it can become more flexible okay and it can also support the previous programming language functions like c and c++ so dynamic in nature java programming become very strong okay hope you can understand the concept okay thank you hello guys in this lecture we will discuss about the oops concept that is called as object oriented programming system concept but before starting the oops concept we should discuss its features as you know that oops concept is very strong part of java programming language on behalf of these oops concept it is called as object oriented programming so let's discuss about the feature of this oops concept okay the first feature is that emphasis is on data than procedures we know the previous programming language like c was dependent on the functions that is why it was called as procedure oriented language but irrespective of the procedure orientation like c java is dependent on the data part and each program are divided that is written into the java into the objects we can access that program and its functionality on behalf of the object next one data structure are designed to characterize the object we have to design the data structure of our application of our program what we are writing that are basically designed to characterize the object's part okay next one methods operating on the data of an object are tied together in the data structure so whatever met method we are uh, specifying so you can say that inside a program there are two major parts one is data part one is method part okay the so data part we have to bind with the method to access the data structure and next one is data is hidden and external function cannot access it as we discussed earlier that security is the major feature in the programming language of java okay so we have to hide all the data it is not open if i want to access that data we have the we have to create the object on that particular data and with the help of that particular object we access that particular data so that we can get the output okay so data is hidden this is the major part of it next objects communicate with each other through the methods so whatever function whatever instruction whatever uh, requirement we have to write we have to write inside the functions inside the methods and with the use of that method we can get our result okay and that method can be accessed with the use of objects and new methods and data can be easily added wherever necessary we know that java is a dynamic programming language due to the dynamic functionality we can add the methods and data wherever it is required and java programming language follows the bottom up approach in program design as we know there are two approaches top down and bottom up so it follows the bottom up approach and here is number of modules small small modules we can combine a small small module to make up a large application now we should start discussing about the object oriented programming systems let's see so here we can see the oops means object oriented programming systems and it can consist mainly the six part the six concept majorly first one object 
then class, then encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, and inheritance. Any programming language that can inherit the feature of OOPs can call as object-oriented programming language. So Java follows these features. That is why it is called object-oriented programming language. Let's discuss the concept of object-oriented programming language one by one. First, we will discuss about the object. So, for definition of object, we can say object is a physical entity that has some state and behavior. Okay, and an object can be defined as an instance of a class. So, take a real-time example. Suppose we are taking the example of car. So, if I'll give 10 lakh rupees to anyone and ask that bring me a car. So without specifying the features, the company name, the name of that particular car, the particular person will not buy the car. We have to specify the name of the company, the properties of that particular car, what we require. Okay, after that he can buy the particular car for me. So car is a white term and inside the car there are numerous companies like Hyundai, Tata, Toyota, Lamborghini, Porsche. So Lamborghini, Porsche and all these things are the object to access the features of the car because car basically have steerings, the wheels, the models, the engines, the seats, all those things it have and combinedly it is called as car. The driving is the basic feature of any type of car. So we have to specify the model of that particular car, the company of that particular car because car is a white term one. All those things what we discussed is the part of the car. So if we consider the car of the Hyundai, if we consider the car of Tata, if we consider the car of Lamborghini, then every car has the wheels, steerings, engines, body, seat, everything. What specifically we require, we have to specify. So, it is dependent on the feature of that particular car. After that, we can buy it. Otherwise, we not. So, car is a wide term that is called as class. And to access the features of that particular car, we have the name like Lamborghini and Tata. So, if I purchase the Fortuner, so that is the type of object by which we are accessing the property of car class. So, Fortuner is the object of that particular car class. In the same way, here is, uh, you can see the fan. So, if I'll say Havels, if you say Khetan, these are the objects to access the fan class. If we take the example of pen, then Rotomag, Celo, Parker are the object of pen class. So, the properties of pen can be accessed with the use of those objects. Bikes, if we take the example of Hero, if we take the example of Royal Enfield, these are the objects of the bike class. Like that, the tables and other objects we can access and actually objects can communicate without knowing the detail of each other's data or code. Okay, we can directly access whatever design inside the class and that particular class can be accessed with the help of object. In any programming language problem, it is analyzed based on the object and how they communicate among themselves. So how we can create the objects, we can create the number of objects on a particular class. So object is the physical entity that has some behavior, some state and we can access any number of classes with the number of objects that are designed on that particular class. Next concept is class. Earlier in the object uh, description, we have said that class is a blueprint. A class can also be defined as a blueprint from which you can create an individual object or you can create the number of object of that particular class. Here in the picture, it is shown a car. So car can be number of objects like a car having all the functionalities in the Tata. The Maruti also have the car class functionality. The Fortuner also have the car class functionality. The Lamborghini and Porsche have the car class functionality. So car is a single class, but we can create the number of objects to access that particular 
car properties and behavior like Tata, Hyundai, Lamborghini, Porsche, like that, we have to access the number of object. The entire set of code and data of an object can be made user-defined data type using the concept of the class. So it is very important feature of that particular class. Any number of object can be created after a class is created as we have given the example. The collection of object of similar type is turned as a class. So anything you can say that is called as a class. Basically class is a blueprint. Next concept is encapsulation. As the name is specified, encapsulating the thing. Okay. So wrapping up data and its method into a single unit is called as encapsulation. So for example, we can take the example of a class. So class has basically two things. One is data member. Second one is member method. So data member and member method we can write anywhere and we can bind it into a single unit that is called as class and we have to give the name of that particular class. If I want to access that data member and member function, we have to create the object and with the help of that particular object, we can access the data member and member function. You can see in the figure, the capsule is designed over here. Capsule, if for the real time example, if you go to the doctor, doctor give you the capsule. If you open that capsule, you can see that there are the different color in the single capsule. Whether it is a, a yellow or green, whether it is a yellow or black like that. Because when you open that particular capsule inside that there are two types of medicines over there. That is the combination of a particular medicine or for a particular disease. If we take it, it can give us the relief in the same way inside a capsule there is method and variable that are wrapped into a single unit that unit is called as class for so wrapping up that data and variable into a single unit that is the concept of encapsulation for example we take an example of a school okay if we see a school we can consider in our mind there will be the students there will be the teachers, there will be the classroom, inside the classroom there will be the benches, there will be the attendance register. So all those functionalities we are wrapping up into a single unit. That particular single unit is called as school. So wrapping up data and member methods into a single unit is called as the concept of encapsulation. Next concept is abstraction. So for the definition we can say that hiding the implementation detail and showing the essential details is called as abstraction. Suppose we can take the example of a particular class. Okay. So taking a class example as car, we can say that what is the basic functionality of a car? There will be the string and wheels and the body and the seat. We require of those things. Okay. When we start that particular car, the car will function and leads us to the destination that is the basic functionality except this we cannot know anything what where fuel is burning what is the functionality of burning the fuel how many number are number of uh, wire are required to give the ignition of that particular car okay what is the functionality to design the engine of that particular car okay we don't require such implementation detail we are hiding it all the things into a body of that particular car and we are accessing the essential feature the key and its starting the wheels by which we can drive okay so these are the basic things which are present before the user okay so hiding the implementation detail how it is working we can design in such a way that particular functionality we can operate second example we can give as the example of the fan so if we switch on the fan and switch off the fan it will work it will on and give us the air okay and if we off it it will stop functionality we need not to know to uh, the requirement of number of wires number of ignition functionality and all those things okay how it is working the, all the implementation details are height okay so we can see only the switch and only the fan to function with so it is a technique of creating a new data type that is suited for a 
स्पेसिफिक एप्लीकेशन हाउ दैट एप्लीकेशन इज वर्किंग ओके यूज वी कैन यूज द एब्सट्रैक्ट क्लास एंड इंटरफेस टू अचीव द एब्सट्रैक्शन देर आर टू कॉन्सेप्ट इन साइड द एब्सट्रैक्शन द इंटरफेस एंड द एब्सट्रैक्ट क्लास विद द यूज ऑफ दिस टू कॉन्सेप्ट वी कैन अचीव द एब्सट्रैक्शन मैकेनिज्म ऑफ ऊप्स कॉन्सेप्ट इन साइड द जावा प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज ओके सो वी कैन नॉट नो द इंटरनल प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ a phone call how it is working we have a phone and after the dialing of the phone number it can ring and we can talk after that we can cut the call how it is going to the pole how it is uh, uh, transmitting through the satellite what is the frequency it is generating we need not to know uh, about these things okay so these all things is happening but it is hidden behind the phone so phone is the essential feature what we are using and the implementation details is hidden next functionality is polymorphism so poly means many and morphism means forms one name many forms is the concept of polymorphism so have you heard about the term polytechnic polyclinic polythin if not i am explaining to you polytechnic means where different type of technique exist polyclinic means where number of different type of clinical requirement are there polythene number of different ethylene elements are there okay so then we can combine all those things into a single place that is called as polyclinic we can combine different type of technique into a single place that is called as polytechnic we can combine the number of ethylene elements into a single place that is called as polythene okay in the same way polymorphism number of forms many forms together we can combine okay suppose for an example we can take a real time scenario we have to consider the example of a family for me i am a son of my father i am a son of my mother i am a brother of my sister okay for my colleagues i am a friend okay so i am a single entity okay but for the different type of requirement my behavior is different some somewhere i am a friend somewhere i am a brother somewhere i am a son somewhere i am a colleague somewhere i am a friend like that the single entity can be have in different ways according to the requirement that is that is called as polymorphism many forms according to the requirement okay so it refers to the ability of a variable object or a function to take an multiple form okay so we can divide the polymorphism into two types one is called as compile time polymorphism and one is called as run time polymorphism you can also define polymorphism that everything that has is a relationship and has a relationship is called as polymorphic like my name is suppose x so x is a son x is a friend x is an employee x is a colleague so x has different type of forms okay and if we take take the example of has a relationship so we are taking the example of a dog to so dog dog has barking capability dog has four legs dog has a special structure so has a relationship exist a respect in the respective of that particular dog according to the its functionalities so that is called as polymorphics so the type of polymorphism is compile time and run time let's discuss what is compile time polymorphism and what is run time polymorphism so compile time polymorphism we can say that when method call resolve at compile time it is called as compile time polymorphism as we know that everything we can write inside the class in the java programming language the so class has two things data member and member method so when we are creating a methods with the same name and the and we are writing the different type of functionality with the same name of methods okay the name uh, method can be anything suppose 1 1 2 3 4 5 so we have to design the same name methods okay and inside that we are writing the different functionality according to the different signatures then when the understanding of that particular method call at the time of its calling it can be understood at the time of compilation 
we can say that it is compile time polymorphism because the names are same and its functionalities are different to understanding of that particular same name fun functionalities at the compile time is called as compile time polymorphism and to achieve the compile time polymorphism we have the example of method overloading okay we can discuss the method overloading program in the next lecture okay Sen uh, second one is that runtime polymorphism so when method call resolve at runtime means we can understand the method can understandable by the compiler at the time of running or execution it is called as runtime polymorphism okay so runtime polymorphism can take place into the different classes okay and the compile time polymorphism can take place into a single class this is the basic difference between the compile time and runtime to achieve the compile time we have a concept method overloading and to achieve the runtime we have the concept called as method overriding so these are the two concept we will see the live demo of these method overloading and method overriding now move to the next concept the last concept of uh, oops is inheritance that is very important okay so if we take the example of inheritance for that i am giving a real time example suppose a new baby born in any family then what happens we say that it, his nose is according to the father his forehead is according to his grandparent so what is it if new baby born then what happens he, he has its own functionality and some functionality from the genetic behavior okay so that is called as inheritance okay the particular child is inheriting the functionalities or the functions or the characteristics of his father his mother his grandfather uh, grandparents in the same way if we talk about the inheritance in java so java inheritance is the mechanism in which one object occupies all the properties and behavior of a parent object we can create a new class that are built upon the existing class so if we can see the particular this uh, figure here is the electronic chip that electronic chip can be used with the phone in the sound system in the mobile system in the telephone system uh, in uh, any uh, headphone or any speakers like thing so the that particular electronic chip is the base class that base class can be inherited by the phone to function by the sound to function and the same chip is used by the mobile phone the telephone the headphones and the speakers okay the same base class can be inherit uh, can be inherited by its child class so that is called as base class and all these things are ca called as child class okay because it is inheriting the concept of this particular chip okay so that is the basic idea behind the inheritance and inheritance provide the idea of reusability of code and each subclass defines only those features that are unique to it rest of the features can be inherited from the parent class okay so dialing functionality is the unique feature of that particular phone but that dialing except the dialing functionality it has the circuit functionality also and that circuit functionality the phone can take from this electronic circuit or electronic chip so inheritance can be of many types first one is single inheritance multi level inheritance hierarchical inheritance multiple inheritance and hybrid inheritance as per the figure if one class is inherited by a one class then it is called as single inheritance here class a is inherited by the class b so this is the example of single inheritance okay then if class a is inherited by the b and b is inherited by the c so c has its own functionality suppose c and b and a so if we want to access the all functionality of a b c and c is inheriting the functionality of b and b is inheriting the functionality of a so c has the functionality of a b and c so if we access that particular c class with the help of object we can get the functionality of all the things so this is the figure is uh, evaluated the functionality of multi level inheritance because this is of the multi level now here we can give the example of multiple inheritance where 
more than one base classes are inherited by a single child class. So class C is inheriting the functionality of A and B. So this is called as multiple inheritance. Here it is called as hierarchical inheritance where the single base class is providing the functionalities to more than one child class. So here B, C and D are the child classes that is inheriting the feature of class A. So this structure belongs to the hierarchical inheritance and combining more type of inheritance more than one type of inheritance into a single structure that is called as hybrid inheritance here if we see this part if we see this part this is the hierarchical inheritance if we see this part this this part this is the multiple inheritance if we see this part this is the multi level inheritance and if we see one by one one by one this is the single inheritance so this is the type of hybrid inheritance by which we can achieve the functionalities of inheritance we can see the live demo in the coming lectures okay so inheritance is the basic important feature of a oops concept so at the last we are revising the oops concept as class object encapsulation abstraction polymorphism and inheritance I hope that you can understand the concepts. Thank you. Hello guys. In this lecture, we will learn about the JRE, JDK, JIT and JVM. What are they? And after that, we will go ahead for the first program of the Java language. And we will discuss the architecture of that particular program. And after that, we will execute that particular program to get the output. So let's start. So JDK has understanding as Java Development Kit. JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. And JIT stands for Just In Time. What are they? We will discuss one by one. So first one is Java runtime environment. As we know that environment is the thing in which all the possible things are present for which we are assigned a task and the particular environment will support the task to execute. Here also the JRE provides the minimum requirement for executing a Java application. Okay, so it consists of Java virtual machine JVM the supporting classes the packages and supporting files from those packages okay so jerry doesn't require any development tool like java compiler debugger error checker okay so it only just provide the environment to execute that particular program including the jvm class libraries or supporting file etc jerry is the implementation of jdm so it provide a platform to execute Java programs. Now next one is JDK, Java Development Kit. What is Java Development Kit? You can say that JDK is the super class of JRE. Java Development Kit is the core component of the Java environment. It includes the JVM, all the components inside the JRE, what is required to make a JRE, all the components with JRE as well as the compiler, debugger, interpreter, the error checker, class loader, all those things are included into that particular JDK. So it provides all the tools, executable and binary requirement to compile that particular code, debug, execute a Java program, all the environment the JDK will provide. It also includes the JRE inside this. It is platform specific software actually, JDK. That is why we have separate installer for Windows, Mac and Unix system. You have to go to the official website of Java. Over there, there is a link for different type of operating systems. Like for Windows, if you want to uh, download the JDK program, there is separate downloader. For Mac, you want to download that program, there is separate downloader. For Macintosh, you need to download uh, something. This is separate downloader for this. So JDK is platform dependent and it includes all the required thing for a Java program to develop and build and execute. We can say that JDK is the 
सुपर सेट ऑफ जे आर सिंस इट कंटेन्स द जे आर विथ जावा कंपाइलर डिवेगर एंड कोर क्लासेस सो करंट वर्जन वर्जन विच इज रनिंग इन द मार्केट ऑफ जेडीके इज जेडीके इलेवन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज जावा इलेवन नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज जेवीएम जेवीएम इज कॉल्ड एज जावा वर्चुअल मशीन इट्स अ अब्सट्रैक्ट मशीन दैट डजेंट फिजिकली एग्जिस्ट सो जेवीएम प्रोवाइड्स अ रन टाइम एनवायरमेंट इन विच जावा बाइट कोड कैन एग्जीक्यूट सो इट इज नॉट प्रेजेंट फिजिकली ऑन दॉट पर्टिकुलर डिवाइस इट इज रन वर्चुअली इट कॉन ऑल्सो रन दो प्रोग्राम्स विच आर रिटर्न इन अदर लैंग्वेजेस एंड कंपाइल्ड टू द जावा बाइट कोड द बेसिक द स्ट्रक्चर यू कैन सी first of all we have to write the java programs and the java program compiles into the intermediate code that is called as byte code the byte code with the help of jvm it will execute and it will convert to the machine code and machine code will process with the cpu and it will give the output okay so that jvm is actually platform dependent so jvm is platform dependent property and it's a, a specification a document that describe requirement of jvm implementation okay so actually the jvm is virtually present on particular ma machine according to that particular machine's property and byte code where wherever that byte code come to that particular jvm jvm is machine dependent including the functionality of that particular operating system whether it is windows whether it is a mac whether it is unix linux whatever uh, platform is there it controls the execution environment of that particular operating system and it can execute that particular byte code in that particular uh, system that is why java is called as platform independent so if we talk about the jvm so it is an abstract machine that is platform dependent and has three notions actually first one is specification so what is the specification it is a document that describes requirement of jvm implementation whatever implementation jvm requires all things are uh, written inside that second one is a computer program that meets jvm requirement third one and last one is the instance that is an application and implementation that executes java byte code so this is all about the jvm by which we can run our program in any platform next one is just in time so jit is the part of jvm that optimize byte code to machine specific language compilation by compiling similar byte code at the same time so hence reducing overall time taken for the compilation of the byte code to machine specific language so just the reduction of the overall compilation time uh for completing that particular byte code to the machine specific code that is called a machine code this is the proper functionality of jit and it is also included inside the jvm that is why it is called as a part of jvm so next one if we talk about uh, to create the first java program so for that we need some components to develop the java program so first component is, is that you have to install the jdk as you know that jdk has the jre debugger compiler the classes required file all these things that provide you environment to run any type of program so first of all we have to install the jdk you can go to the official site of oracle from over uh, you can download the jdk for windows and after that you have to install it after installing that particular uh, jdk it will create a java folder inside the c drive program files and you have to set the permanent path of that particular jdk in the environment wherever we we will discuss it uh, through the examples no problem after that you have to use any type of writer or editor you can simply use the normal notepad file and save that notepad file with the java extension or you can use any type of id okay like uh, netbeans uh, eclipse okay so uh, some of the uh, required uh, editors are given as uh, notepad plus plus atom sublime komodo edit sugarzini you can use these editor editors to write the java program or simply you can use the notepad file exist in the uh, windows operating system or you can install the ide integrated uh, development environment uh, 
like NetBeans and Eclipse that uh, will give you the more functionality to develop the Java program. So first of all, if I'll go to develop the first program that is written over here, this one. So everything we discussed that this is uh, the object oriented programming language. So everything should be written inside the class. And so here we have defined the class name as demo. Okay, so demo is the name of the class. Class uh, is the keyword. Along with that, we have public static wide main and inside that string args. So this is the main method of the Java program from where you can start the execution of that particular program and system.out.println and inside that it is written as hello. So this line will uh, use to print the hello message after the execution. So this is the program if we write that program and we have to save the file with the file name with along with java.java .java extension and after that you have to open the notepad and minimizing the notepad you have to open the command prompt. From the command prompt you have to go to the actual location of that particular file where you have saved that particular file and after that you for compilation you have to write the java c space the file name dot java so here we have considered the file name as java dot demo so so we here the demo dot java is the r file name and we have to compile that file with the command java c demo dot java after the, the compilation the demo dot java will convert into a dot class file that will be the bytecode file and to execute that bytecode file we have the java and after that file name demo and after that it will give the output to you if you want to see the bytecode you have to run the uh, command java p hyphen c after that demo that is the file name you will get the bytecode over the command prompt so here let's describe what is the use of public static white mean so why it is it not written only white mean like C programming language so public keyword is used to make the execution uh, uh, to make that particular execution accessible throughout the environment of that particular system static is written that is why if you want to I have told you that everything are written inside the class and that class properties data members and member method can be accessed through the object only in the Java java but if you don't want to use the object uh, to access the particular data then you have to use the static keyword uh, over here that doesn't require to extract the data with the help of object so public is written that is why its scope will be public uh, uh, in our uh, throughout the environment of our uh, laptop or desktop or the machine and static is written that is why you need not to create the object to access the hello word over here and main is the void is means, uh, it doesn't require any uh, return type and main is the main program designed to execute it and inside that uh, string args is, writ is written this is called as command line arguments that means in java everything is accepted in the form of string okay so that command line arguments how we use is we will discuss in the later lecture Below that, if you, I want to print anything, we have to write system.out.println. So why we use system.out.println? So if we see that system is the class, okay, everything is written in the libraries when developed. So libraries are called over here packages. So every package, there are different, different type of functionality. And uh, in that, those packages, uh, the Java classes and functions are written over here. If I want to use those classes, functions and library files, we have to use the particular method to access that particular file. So the basic uh, package for the uh, any Java program is java.lang. So here system is a class, out is a variable and println is the method. So system is a class in the java.lang package. The out is the static member of the system class and is an instance of java.io.println. The println is a method of java.io.println. This method is overloaded to print message to output destination, which is typically a console or file. So this is the print stream 
is inside the IO package if I want to access this. So we have to use the println method from there. So system.out.println combinedly used to print the message in the Java program. So here is the description over here. Let's see the live demo to create a particular Java program and execute, and execute it after installing the JDK. So here we have downloaded the JDK uh, from the official website of Oracle. Now we have to click on that particular JDK to install this into our system. So we have clicked in our JDK and we have to install this in our system to run the Java program. So here we have to click next and there is Java development tool after that next and it will start installing. So here it will ask about the by default uh, installation folder. So here uh, the JRE will install inside the Java folder uh, inside the program file of C drive. So we don't want to change it. You, if you want to change the location, you can change from here. Okay. So next we have put it over here, and after that it will start installing. So after successful installation, we will close that particular thing. And after that, we have we have to create a notepad file and write the application. So before that, we have to set the permanent path of that particular JDK. So for that, we have to click the Windows button. And after that, we have to go to the properties. So for that, we have to click on the this PC, right click, and we have to go to the properties. And in properties, we see that advanced system settings. In advanced system settings, we have to go to the environment variable. And here, we can drag it. And there is a path. So we have to double click on that particular path. The path will give you such type of things. Here, we have to click new. Okay. So we have to copy the path of the JDK from the C drive. So we have to go to the C drive first. So here we can see inside the C drive, we have to go to the program files and here is the Java. Inside the Java, there is JDK installed and JRE installed. So we have to go to the JDK. Inside the JDK, we have to go to the bin. If you see that there is Java C, that is the Java compiler that is responsible to compile your program and convert it into the uh, byte code. So here, till here, we have to take the path of that particular thing uh, and we have to set the path of that particular Java compiler permanently. So we have to copy the path of that particular Java C. So we have to copy the path from here, control C. And again, we will go to the previous opened file here, previous opened file. And here we have to click the new and inside that we have to paste it. After that, OK, then OK. Now we have set our permanent path. So it is set so it is set permanently now you can access any of java program from there so we have to now we have to open the notepad file and we have to write the first program of java so we have to open the notepad file here we have to here we have to open this one and type notepad 
and after opening the note after opening the notepad here we have to write the program so we should write the program class demo and inside that we have to open and close this and inside that we have to write public static void main and here a string s should be capital because string is a class inside the java so class name should be it is the convention that class name inside the java should be start with the capital letter so here i have written the class name string s as small and inside that we have given this one and here system is the class so we have to write s capital s y s t e m system dot out dot print ln and here we have to give the hello world okay so now here file you have to save that file with the java extension so i have to write the file name as demo dot java and here text file should be all file and after that we have to save that particular file i have saved that particular file in the desktop okay so i have saved that particular file so you can say uh, you can see that demo file is saved over here now i have to run this particular file so here we have again open the cmd command prompt and with the use of that command prompt we have to first go to the location so where is my file saved on the desktop so we have to go on the desktop and here we have to first compile that particular file for compilation we have to write java c and the file name demo dot java what we have saved and we have clicked it so it is saying that uh, static this this one is that uh, error class now so we have to write static and the spelling mistake is there so let me see to improve it let me see okay so we have to write the static 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 and save that file again then again we have to compile that particular file then again it is saying that uh, this is white some mistakes over there public static white uh, string something so let me see first so we have improved it again we have to write java c then the file name demo dot java and here it is compiled after the compilation you can see that there is a class file over here the class file is the bytecode file for you okay so that class whatever written inside that class file if i want to see then we have to open this and here we have to write java p hyphen c then the file name demo so it is the bytecode the loading program invocation returning what is the static inside that what is the virtual function it is calling okay print stream method print error method all these things are written over there so this is a platform independent code you can run that particular platform so uh, now we have to execute that thing so for execution we have a command java and the file name without the extension the file name is demo if you click on that so it is not found it is not able to load the main class demo okay let me see why so here d is the small letter okay uh, in the class so you can see in the class d is in a small letter here demo d is in a small letter so we have the to write the exact class name for the execution here we have to write java and d E M O demo here. So here is what here is your output whatever you have written inside the main. So in this way, you can execute the Java program and write the Java program. Hope you are understanding those things. Thank you.